Okay, so we're here at the casting of It's Reality, a brand new TV show to find two presenters to represent um, a production crew to go on red carpets and all that. And I have the lovely Eccentric over here and the lovely Mary Martin and everybody know them. So Eccentric, um, Eccentric is here today, basically yeah. the judge. Just to judge people off their appearance because she's a stylist and she's also a TV presenter so she know what we're looking for. We have Mary over here, the bold one. Tell people what they have to hear and also the designer so she knows exactly how people should dress in different kind of situations. So, how are you finding today? Um, today was very um, eventful, I must say. And uh, I like to see young people just come out and basically go after, chase their dreams. You know what I mean? So, they get a, they get a point for me just for coming here in the first place. Yeah, I thought today was very eventful as well, but um, it's good to see like young people following their dreams, but sometimes some of them have to just push that little oh, bit harder. Oh my God, their personality, mm -hmm. aren't they? Some of them have some personality, but they don't know that there's a place and time for everything. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I will agree. Um, I mean, as entertainers, yeah as um, presenters, as actors, and all these different um, personalities, basically. We all have big personalities. Personality. That's why we like the entertainment industry. Yeah. But I think there's a time and a place for everything. And that's all I have to say about yeah. that, really. There's a time and a place for everything. Yeah. And we have, done, we have actually done some interviews so far. Have yeah, and I've actually loved I love China wine. I thought she was amazing. That's one of my favorites. Not that you asked. And I also love um, China wine. Warren Ryan. I thought he was amazing. And I like Rakea. I can't pronounce the surname. And I thought she was great as well. Okay, but we do have some great ones here yeah. today. And you will be seeing the clips up on the website. You will be seeing all day actually came off today you will have your opinion you can comment about it and tell us um what you thought about it so because we have our opinions we know what we're looking for but what you out there are looking for what are you out there looking to see on your tv or in your computer your phone wherever you're looking and um, watching us from today is that what right yeah, so, yeah. That's all right, that's all right. <laughs> and, and if you look on the clash tv channel you'll be able to click and vote for the ones which you thought were great definitely. yeah most definitely yeah. i mean personally i um, in terms of grading, some po some people get more than yeah, some. Because we're grading. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. we're grading basically personality, yeah. appearance, technique, and also we had two tasks which they had to choose from. Yeah. So task given. Um, I wouldn't say I had any favorite. You know, basically, you know, sometimes when people are nervous, yeah. we we can see the worst of first them. Time. Do you know what I mean? So this is for the first time. So I don't really have any favorites, but. Um, some some of them did stand up more than some. Yeah. In the life that I live, you get one chance. If you want that job, you have to do your best. Like it's every day has to be the f for the very first time. You have to just go in there and you have to just do what you have to do. There's no time to be thinking, oh, I'm shy or I can't do it. Because if that's the case, you're at the wrong audition. But then again, as you can see, I'm the nice judge. The the really bossy one and the in-between <laughs> she can be nice and she can be brutal and that's what this show is about it's about finding the presenter and telling them the reality of the show it's called it's reality it's in or out can you take the truth and we have have we given the truth today yeah um, most definitely <laughs> yeah yeah so we have to basically go through a tally see who we basically like you will see them up on the website you will see their clip so please watch tell us comment vote for your favorite one and hope to see you on the screen soon right hope yeah. to see you bye so take care <laughs> Hi, welcome to Music Memoirs. On today's show, we have got an incredible new up-and-coming singer-songwriter. Hi, Ruth. Well, Hi. How are you? I am good. Thank you very much. How are you? Yes, good, thank you. You're looking lovely today. Thank you very much yourself. Oh, thank you. Now, this is one of your first ever TV interviews. Yes. How are you looking so relaxed? Um, I don't know, because I do music. I'm always on stage. I'm going in front of a crowd, so it's kind of something natural, but the camera's making me a little bit anxious just pretend it's not there honestly it's doing. fine <laughs> just pretend it's one of your fans yeah. you'll be fine yeah my fans out there <laughs> <laughs> say hi and you've recently moved to london how are you finding it scary um it's 
it's okay. Yeah. Just the cold. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? You're supposed to be summer. We complain when it's hot. We complain when it's cold. You know. Uh, but it's like, you <laughs> wouldn't be it. British if we didn't. You know. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> now, your debut single, "You I See," is in the top twenty. I mean, that's just incredible. How does it make you feel? It's incredible because it just started a few months ago. And to actually have a single out in the top 20, fabulous. <laughs> thanks, thanks to all of my fans out there for actually watching it, downloading it. And please keep doing it. I need to be top one. Oh, right? Well, we I've heard one. the single and it's <laughs> well deserved, you know, and Thank I just hope it keeps much. climbing. Thank so, oh, it must be scary. <laughs> so. well, you have to go for it. Can't yes, you do. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> Do you have a songwriting ritual? Um, not really. No? no. Don't sing in the shower? <laughs> Sometimes. Do you? Yeah. I don't want to hear me in the shower. Singing in the car. <laughs> yes. Other people's songs, so. Oh, yeah, there yeah. you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just listening to me actually get my songwriting going. And I'll take my phone out and start recording. I was about to ask. <laughs> do you have like a little notepad if you suddenly have a no, my phone first my notepad. My phone. Yeah. I'll just go to record and just... And just start singing and be like, oh my God, that's so good. I need to turn that into a single. <laughs> Who's the random lady singing on the tube? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then. Who, what would you say was your main inspiration? Who or? Well, from when I was little, I grew up with music, go to church, mm -hmm. I sing a lot. So my main inspiration was actually just the, the good music, good vibes. As long as you sing something really good, you're my inspiration. Yeah. I listen to good 80s, 90s music. Something that actually have a message behind it, and that's why I want to push to my public. Oh, that's lovely. And you're currently on tour with Bastille. How is that going? It's going good. My yeah. first tour, so I'm getting used to it and all that. So, yeah. I've heard their fans are a bit crazy. I know, they are. <laughs> they, they're really crazy. But then again, it's really good because I'm using their fans or my fans. For now. <laughs> Do you have any exclusive backstage gossip for us? No, I don't. Are you sure? Sorry. Yes, sorry. Nothing at all. Sorry, nothing. <laughs> no one falling off stage. Mm -hmm. oh. If you want to find out, just go to YouTube. Or just go on tour and, oh, no. you know, come so and come see you. The they can go after they've yeah. seen you sing. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show and we really look forward to hearing your song later. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hi, I'm Rosa Lev and today I'm interviewing someone I've wanted to meet for so long, Chantelle. How are you? I am fine. How are you? I'm absolutely great. <laughs> so, welcome to London. Um, I know you've been here lots of times. Yes. So, what's your favourite thing about when you come to London? Um, see Big Ben. I've heard so much yeah. about it, so... I'm sure it's not the weather that brings you here. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> Especially now. It's summer, but when yeah. it's at the same time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So one of the things you're most known for is your Vitaligo spokeswoman. Um, such inspirational speaking. And you're a model as well. So how long... Um, so how, how's it been living with Vitaligo? Um, well, it's been okay. Um, I'm not stressing about it because then mm. I have to go on with life. But the good thing about it is that I actually can go out there and tell people about it and inspire other people to just live life to the fullest. Don't think about um, being trying to eat out because we only have one life to live and we have to live it to the fullest as we can. So That's great, yeah. So what's the main point you try to sort of tell, to tell people when you're giving these speech well, speeches? Well, the main point, as I said just before, was basically just tell them that we have one life and mm. the fullest, uh, if we can live it, something that we want mm. we go out there any dream that we have we can accomplish it as long as we have our work we look forward to it that's what i just give them i just want to be a mentor to just young women yeah so young people coming up with the same um fitness so yeah, and you are honestly one of the hardest workers women. She's doing modelling 24-7, speaking, she's travelling around the world. It's absolutely, honestly, inspirational. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we've just recently heard that you've just done a shoot in V magazine. Um, you can actually see the picture now. Love the diamonds as well, by the way. Thank Beautiful. You. I love diamonds also. <laughs> oh, who doesn't? Really? Who doesn't? <laughs> Definitely. So how does it feel reaching this height in your career? Um, it's really good because from a really young girl, I've always wanted to become someone that people look up to. I always mm. wanted to become worldwide, my name being sent over magazines, billboards, yeah. newspapers. So that's something to actually look back at 
and know that I have accomplished all of that with Be The Day. Mm, definitely. I love that, you know, you've just gone for it. Nothing's holding you back. Yeah. You're really fantastic. I think that's what everybody should do. Yeah. Go for it, anything that they want. The only thing that's stopping you is yourself. No one is stopping you. Preach it. I love <laughs> it. I love it. <laughs> So, have you always wanted to be a model, or did you want to do something else, or...? Model? No, it just fell in my lap. I've always okay. wanted to become... A day, I've always wanted to become an actress. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Me. Yeah. It's not working out for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did my pretty face, my long legs. <laughs> Love it, yeah. And where I am today. So, and it's, it's like the best choice I ever made, because yeah. it's bring me so much happiness. Um, so lastly, I always leave with this question. If you could be any animal in the world, what would you be? I would be a dog. <laughs> and why is that? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm my own dog, so I love dogs. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's been really, really great meeting you today. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed it and speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Hi, welcome back to Will's Natter. Now, today we've got my favourite guest on. It's the spectacle-wearing, rear of the year winning comedian and chat show host that we all love. Please welcome, Alan Carr. Yay. How are you today? I am great, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I've not seen you in ages. Now, obviously, our audience know you at home for the chat show chatting. I'm very successful. Yes. What can we expect from your new series? Anyone at home that you're willing to bring to it? Well, they can expect a lot of fun <laughs> and joke yes we're gonna have a lot of people coming on the show and it's gonna be more entertaining more funny and it's just something that's gonna mind blow so just stay tuned and you will see it not giving any more now we all obviously the audience know you at home as the let's say drink loving chat show host i mean if we can ask any question what are you like after a drink like i mean i know me personally after a gin and tonic i'm a bit angry red wine i'm a bit sad like what are you like after a few drinks? Um, I'm all good. I'm all happy. I'm joking. I've just laid back. I just when I drink, I really get tired. So I just sit down, and you will see me doing this. <laughs> I'm just relaxing and thinking at the same time. But I get really tired after a drink, so I don't get really loud or you know, just relax. Everybody knows me as the talkative kind of person, but when I drink, I'm not talkative at all. So, as in, see, I see myself, if I was any, like, cocktail around the world, I'd be a mojito. Yeah. You know, bit bitter, bit sweet, you know, very strong. You don't want too many of them, but yet everyone loves one. Yeah. Like, what would you see yourself, like, tell the audience at home how you feel? Ooh, I've never thought about that before. Let me see. Well, we ask the questions people want to hear, so, you know, yeah, you've got to think. That. Let's see. I would be sex on the beach. Ooh, so a bit, a bit spiced, but nice, sweet, yeah. fruity. But just the name alone, though. <laughs> okay. I'm with the name. <laughs> well, back to the questions. Now, obviously, we're expecting a new tour. We know you've been doing little tours around the world, uh, around the country, and everything. But we last a few years ago, about four years ago, you did your big arena yeah. tour, Spexy Beast. Yeah. What can we can we expect, you know, something new? I mean, it has been four years. Are you nervous, excited? No, not really, because I've been doing this for years, so I get used to it. I'm just looking forward for it. See, I know that my last tour actually sold out. There was a lot of people there, so I'm just looking forward to seeing this and see how many people turned up and hope I have tons of fans out there that actually love my material that I'm putting out, so, yeah. Well, I'll definitely be there. I was there on the last one, and I'll be there this one as well. Yeah, I was the one... I was the one chatting vodka, but no one obviously heard. So, um, now, um, with the papers today, obviously, every you're in the news all the time. Um, how tell our audience home how you feel? You know, I mean, with it not having a private life as such, like obviously your relationships, your lifestyles, and everyone wants to know who you are. Like, how do you cope with that today? Well, the thing is, everyone needs a um, private life, but when you're a celebrity and in the public eye. There's no privacy at all. So I, when I just started out, it was really, you know, bad. It got me off my focus. I wasn't focusing and all that. But now that um, I get used to it, it's been years and years after years, I'm actually used to it. So it doesn't really affect me in any kind of way. Just the bad negativity and all that. Everyone gets them. So yeah, you have to get used to it. Well, so we've noticed now your dogs. 
always Instagramming, taking pictures, yeah. uploading, yeah, always not. loving. <laughs> now, do you not think you've become a bit of a dog board, to be fair? I mean, people watching at home are just going to be, they think that's all you're going to be famous for. Like, I mean, you're very public about it. I mean, I mean, is that your life? I mean, obviously, we know you're single at the moment. I mean, do, do you just look forward to going home, chilling with the dogs? Or, I mean, do they travel around with you when you're on tour and um, stuff? It's both ways, you know. Sometimes we can't take the dogs with me. I don't have a nanny all the time. <laughs> so I leave them at my home with my family. But I love my dogs. Come on, they're, they're, they're my best friend. Well, nothing better than that. Me. <laughs> but we did see, and it was reported on Twitter, that when the TV man came to fix the cable, yeah. they'd actually messed up the whole front room. I mean, how was that for you? As a TV star, and some, someone from the public can walk into yeah. your house, sell a story. I mean, what were you thinking, he really? He was just lying. He was, he was lying. He just wanted some extra cash. He's lying. My house is always neat. I have cleaners. Oh, <laughs> I mean, we've all wanted extra cash at times, but we don't, we don't go public with it, do we? <laughs> Now, basically, what else can we expect? Like, tell people at home watching, what can we expect from you? What do we want to see? Like, is there anything new? I mean, you know your famous comedian chat shows. I mean, is there any other stuff that's more? Oh, have you? Bye. Hi, you're on the couch with Yo, and today's guest we have Sarah JC, otherwise known as Sarah Jane Crawford, the new Extra Factor presenter. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Lovely to join us. So, you're the new presenter. You're taking over Ollie Merz and Caroline Fl Flack Flick. I can't pronounce her name. <laughs> Is it Flack Flick? Something Flack like Flack. That. Yeah. How do you feel taking over their role? Um, I think I have a big shoe to fit because th there was Ollie Marks, there was um, um, the Fern. No. And um, everybody knows them. They're funny, they're good together. So, just me being there and working over it's like um, a big shoe to fit but then again it's a great experience and i'm glad that um x factor actually asked me to come on their show cool and also you're you be, you've been traveling around all the world doing the festivals next week's festival yeah uh what's your festival handy three tips um my tips um well you have to go with the crowd you have to know what they want um be yourself and have fun. <laughs> you have to have fun in everything you do. And um, back to Extra Factor. So what do you think of the new judges? Simon, Mel B, Cheryl, Cheryl and Louie. Well, they're always a part of the show, aren't they? So, well, we just got back Cheryl on the judging panel. So I think it's quite good. I think they're good judges and they know exactly what they want. And the singers out there, um, all these people come into audition. It's quite good that we know uh, people on the judging panel that know music so yeah so what's music to you music is life you listen to your music and you know what is behind it I only listen to good music anyway so I listen to a music that have a story behind it I want to feel what they were feeling when I'm listening to music what's the first thing you do when you wake up brush my teeth <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my bed smell out my mouth you know to brush my teeth and then go for breakfast. Well, I don't have breakfast, but I would do that if I did. <laughs> Apart from presenting DJing, uh, what do you like to do to chill out? Um, drink a bottle of wine, go out with friends, just be merry, be away from work. And I see you're very stylish dresser. Right? Is this the flow of the energies that you give on your shows? Um, well, you know, you have to dress different ways for different things. And today I'm coming to an interview with you. To look good, look at you. <laughs> I, had to out, I had to outdo you, man. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> what one food that, if you're stuck in a desert island, what one food would you have on the island? Ooh, what's on the island? Desert island. What's on the island? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I can get it from anywhere, right? So the one food. There's no grocery. You can only have one food on the island. And they will deliver it to me, right? No you have it with you when you arrive. Uh, okay, oh, so they will deliver it before us. Um, I would have um, KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Processed food. I don't have to cook it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you can stay there, I'm gonna... 
So guys, you're tuned in to Need for Success, okay? We've got a special guest here today. I mean special. I don't even have to introduce you, okay? I don't have to introduce him. This guy gives me goose pimples. He's a role model to me. So Will Smith, how does it feel to be on the show? Oh my God, it's great, good, because I'm back in London going on my movie premiere next week. So it's really good to come out and just help mentor people out there because this show is about giving back to the community, bringing bringing people up so it's good to be on need to success yeah definitely do you know what like literally you've been on numerous amount of films okay this person will smith like, literally from fresh prince oh. to bad boys 2 heard of you're making a bad boys 3 as well it's out if if it's if anybody know about it i don't know maybe yeah yeah just go on the internet everything's on the internet nowadays that aren't they everyone knows who you are you don't have to promote <laughs> listen seriously everyone knows they'll be tuning in right now I know. But listen, but, but, but to talk deeper behind that though, because obviously the Will Smith we know is obviously the confident, enthusiasm, ener you're, like, you're energized, okay? Tell the people that are watching, okay, how you, obviously you had setbacks in your career. Yeah. Like, so some sort of think, people sort of think that you get to fame by overnight, an overnight success. So literally tell them how, how, many, how many casting directors said no to you? Well, everybody I've said, like, I go on casting all the time when I was just going into movies and I get no, no, no all the time. But the one movie that I actually got a yes to, that built a way for me, that built a fold because people see that movie. Everybody loves Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. That's what everybody knows me for. The, uh, especially my dancing, you know. <laughs> Not going to do it today. <laughs> but everybody knows me from that. And from that, it actually made a way for me, made a part. Um, I don't get the movies that I always wanted, but the ones that I get are really, like, it's really interesting. People love them, and people love Will Smith. People love that little boy that was in um, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, groomed to be this man today that everybody loves. So yeah, I, add, um, I did not get anything handed to me. I had to work hard, really, really hard for it. I'm not an actor because I was born to be an actor. I was born to be an actor. <laughs> But, but seriously, like, you have been, like, literally, you've been a role model to me in the sense that what I find different with you is that when you're acting on, when you're in your films, okay, that energy that you yeah. bring, others can't, other actors, you can't act that. I think when you're offset, I think that's your character. I think even when I've seen, when I've seen you in other shows, I've seen you bring that kind of, like, fresh prince, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That energy. You, yeah. You're contagious. The thing is... With everything you do, you have to bring your own character. You have to yeah. bring your own personality. Even though you're playing somebody else, you can't forget that you're you. You have to have something in it that represents who you are. People out there is going to know that person. So when, it, when I'm offset, I'm not on the movie, when I'm on the road, people know me for being this upbeat person that just, you know, everybody just loves that people, that person that I am. And that's just who I am. So, you, so have you always been that energized? Have you always been a joker in your group? I would say yes. I would definitely say that. <laughs> you know what? Some people say I'm a joker too. <laughs> Some people say I'm a joker too. Are you Brad? I am. Woohoo! I want to welcome you to Leicester Square. How's everything going? Thank you very much. Everything's quite good. I'm like here for, to promote my new movie that I'm in, The Red Sea. I hope everybody yes, that's correct. Yeah. So I hope yes. everybody enjoyed the movie itself. It's very important. So, um, what cast are you working with? Um, I'm working with um. I don't know if you know some of some of them are quite yeah, new faces. Yeah, like people like those, Tom you know. So everybody excellent. should know the. P have you seen the trailer? I have seen it. Yeah. Yeah. So you, everybody should see the I trailer and know YouTube. the names. So everybody should see the trailer and know the names that I'm working with. It's a big movie. Um, I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing it. I haven't the seen it as yet. Pardon? So how much is it going to gross in the first weekend? I don't know that. The production crew will know it's that. Fifty million <laughs> net profit. <laughs> One point two billion. So, Brad, I want to ask you about your last movie, World War Z. How did it go? Um, I think it went really good. I enjoyed every moment of, um, moment of it. We yeah. got really good reviews. So, yeah. Was it, it a great really experience, good. right? Definitely great experience. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's my thing. Thank yeah. you. Um. 
So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is China Wine, and welcome to the world of China Wine. Now, today we have somebody amazing on this show, somebody that you all love, somebody that's affected your lives over the years and is one of the most richest women in the world. We have the amazing, the one and only Oprah Winfrey. Please give her a round of applause. Welcome, <laughs> Oprah. It's great to see you today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. Now, you've influenced so many people over the years. I mean, so many women, so many men with your story especially with your background of like yeah. where you came from can you just tell us a little bit about how you grew up and the, the sort of things that affected you yeah well I grew up um, in a poor family a poor family um, poor background and everything but I've always had this ambition of being this girl that could give back to the community give back to people that wasn't that don't have it that I didn't and I started out in beauty pageants and that led me through um, TV presenting and starting TV presenting I got my own opportunity having my own show and here I am today I mean it's I have to say you know you've had an incredible journey and I mean you know you did go through some childhood traumas yeah. I mean you know when you came out and told you know told your viewers about how you know, the trauma you'd been through and how you know you'd had abuse yeah. um, growing up I mean I think there was this, this was very very courageous for Definitely. you to actually come out how do you how do you feel about you know letting the public know about your own personal yeah. journeys in development well, one the idea behind that was to actually give people who has been in abusive um, relationship, been in abusive family, the right and the choice of going out and tell people that that people that can help them. And if I am, I am one of the um, people call me one of the most influential pe women, black women in the world, and people look up to me. I wanted to be that person that people look up to and say that if she can do that, I can do it. Absolutely, because there is that element of when you're in the limelight and people yeah. see you as this amazing icon, that they somehow remove you from reality and yes. you don't feel like this person is actually even real yeah. and sort of real life situations <laughs> don't really happen to yeah. them, you yeah. know yeah. what I mean? So you by, by you coming out and you know letting your viewers, letting the world know that yes, you are a real person, yeah. yes, you... Okay, guys, now this is the interview that you've all been waiting for. I'm Annette, and I am with the one and only, amazingly talented Brad Pitt for his up-and-coming film, The Red Sea. Brad Pitt, nice to meet you. How are you today? I am great, thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for asking. Now, first of all, Brad, I'm sure the viewers at home want to know, how does it feel just recently getting married to the lovely Angelina Jolie? Um, well, we, we have been together for years, we have children, so the best thing was to do actually tie the knot, wasn't it? And I love Absolutely. <laughs> you love her to bits, you I said. I love her to bits. I yes. love you. <laughs> uh, we can all see that. And Angelina, you are a lucky, <laughs> lucky woman. Okay, now, for this film, The Red Sea, when is it coming out, please? Well, we're, uh, I don't know when it's coming out. We're just on the red carpet going to the movie premiere now, so I think the... It will be up and soon, like quite soon. So look out for it, guys. <laughs> okay. And we all want to know as well, because, you know, we've seen some snippets of it and we've yeah. seen the trailer. Tell, me, tell us more about the film. I mean, you was, you know, filming um, a lot in the sea. Yeah. And I'm sure that must have been you know, long hours working mm -hmm. and training for this role. Tell the viewers at home more about the film and your, your character. Who do you play? Well, I am the lead role. I play the man with the wife and the children um, at the, uh, um, in the sea. We went for a holiday, but yet still the rain storm got us and we actually s stopped in the Red Sea and I lost my son in the water. So oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. So it's just something that's very interesting. It's about me playing this role of being a father, which I am at home. Well, never in a film, so it's quite easy for me to do it. But yes, still, it was very emotional and all that. But it's something that you have to see on the trailer to know what it was. You have to read up about it. And yeah, looking forward to seeing it today. I haven't seen the old film, so looking forward. Okay, well, so are we. Now, Brad, um, you've been a, you know, a fantastic, accomplished actor for a very long time now. And, you know, what was it about this role that made you, you know, want to star in this film? It's the script. When, the, my, when my manager sent me the script, the script just gripped me. It was me playing something that I do at home every day and mixing it with the sea and everything. So it's, it's just the script. And uh, when I see a script, I know it belongs to me and that just belonged to me. <laughs> okay. 
Fantastic, thank you. Now, I'm sure everybody at home wants to know, okay, I definitely do. What was it like working with your famous ex, Jennifer Aniston? We have history back, so um, the wife wasn't happy. <laughs> but then again, we have to get paid. And she's a good friend of mine, even though we broke up, we're still friends. And it's easier to get along with her because I know she, I know who she is, she know me, and there wasn't any drama about it, so yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good to hear that. Thank you so much, Brad. Good evening, I'm Rakea Tago and I'm here interviewing the amazing worldwide superstar, Mr. Kanye West. Hey Kanye. Hey, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm very well, thank you. And so Kanye, first of all, so nice to meet you. Yeah. And congratulations on the birth of your beautiful baby daughter, North. Thank you very Northwest. much. Northwest. <laughs> so North is a very unusual name. I'm really curious <laughs> as to where North, well, Northwest. I'm, I'm from Liverpool, I'm from the Northwest. Yeah. I'm really <laughs> curious as to where that came from. Was it your idea or? Um, no, it was just the wife idea. Basically, she wanted to have, since my name is West surname, we just thought that it would be really nice to have something kind of pointing to the fact that, yeah, West and North, North, West, South, West, yeah. East, West. We tried everyone, but <laughs> North was the best one. North was yeah. the best one. <laughs> oh, I love the name, love the name, definitely. Um, so the Kardashians is one of my favorite programs. Yeah. I think I've seen every episode up to now. But I noticed that North's face isn't ever shown on the program, although the other children like Mason and all the other kids are. Yeah. Is that like, I mean, was, was that Kim's choice, your choice, or was that? Um, it's both of our choice. We just thought that our personal life should be keep um, personal. We know that that's Kim, um, that's the way that she makes her money, that's her career. But um, when it comes to um, our personal life, that should kept separate. Yeah. I, I, yep. I, I've never been on her show. We've been friends for years, and that's all we actually got yeah. hooked up in the. But you want to keep your children yeah. private out of it. Yeah, yeah that's understandable. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, how is it having Chris Jenner for a stepmother? Like, she seems like she can be quite pushy. Or how is that? On the camera, she is, isn't she? She is. Yeah. She's a very nice person. Um, if you should meet her and get to know her, she's really good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah she seems lovely. I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, so, so, so still on the subject, you and Kim are happily married now, which is amazing, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. But I think a subject that everyone is itching to find out about is how do you feel about the Ray J sex tape? I mean, how is, I mean, is that intimidating that, <laughs> that every man in the world has, has seen your wife like that? Um, it is in some kind of way, but then again, I love her and everybody made mistakes. There's a lot of people that have seen what my life looks, what my wife looks like on the, yeah. you know, yeah. in the bed too. <laughs> I mean, she looks hot. I've seen it myself and she did look hot. She looked good. You know, she just came into my music video half naked, so. <laughs> she did, yeah. Your wife is hot. Your wife is hot stuff. I mean, if, if I would say, I'd be flaunting that as well. Definitely. What? No, not at all. <laughs> So, kind of steering away from that, I'm really interested to find out about your unique fashion sense. So, niggas in Paris, we saw you wear a skirt. You, yeah. p you promoted wearing a skirt. So, how do you feel about the original Tupac Biggie, like thug, like wearing bandanas and stuff to like the contemporary rappers now wearing skirts? Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about that transition? The thing is, everybody have their own personality. Everybody have their own characteristic, and that's just mine. Um, two packets, what you just said, and Biggie, they dress the way that they dress. I dress the way that I dress. I like the way that I look, and that's just something that I want to put out to my fans out there and all those people. Because so I think a lot, a lot of people nowadays might say that the original rappers did actually portray thug like like images, but now, like for instance, yourself and Will I Am, kind of. They might even say it's a bit feminine. I mean, do you agree or? No, it's not feminine. We just look after ourselves, don't we? Yeah. You like looking good. Yeah. I like looking good. Yeah. I'm in the public eye. I like to look good. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, well, there you go. So, I have to let you come up, so. Welcome to uh, your new show, It's Reality. You are watching for Clash TV, and I'm Yogo, your host for tonight. Today, we have Angela Jolie to talk about how to manage your career as a female in the film industry. 
How are you, Angelina Jolie? I am great. How are you today? I'm fine. You look very sexy. Thank you very much. I tried my best. <laughs> cool. So, I saw that you are on Maleficent film. Uh, why did you choose the, to play this role? Well, I wouldn't say I choose to play. I think if, if I film, um, I think the film chooses me. Because there's so many films that I get um, asked, be, um, asked to do every day. But then again, if I don't feel it, I'm not doing it. But I felt this one. I really wanted to do it. And it's something that I think I'm a great, my personality just show about it. Even though I'm playing someone else, my personality is all over it. Okay. And how do you choose in general your roles for the films? Um, well, normally the producers do that. <laughs> They tell me what to play and I play. But everybody knows that I'm always the lead role. So just definitely picking the script and know, knowing that that is just mine. Yeah. And you think that male actors have more roles than female actresses? Um, it depends on the kind of films because there's different kind of films out there that um, are meant for male. And there's films out there that are meant for women. And I think it's an equality because if you are good at what you do, Look at, um, there's, um, there's so many other women out there that plays men in movies. So I think it's kind of a way that people portray themselves in a different kind of way. Yeah. And how do you feel in the industry as a woman? Yeah, um, in the industry it's kind of, um, sometimes I f um, feel that women are kind of pushed to a bat because there's so many male out there that with big personality, they have been in film all their life. So it's quite, um, overwhelming to know that sometimes some women don't get the opportunity to be in some films that what um, you said before in that one but then again I said as, as I said there's different kind of genre in, mu in films so you are meant to play this one you're meant to play that one and you are a mother too so how do you manage your career as a, a mum and a wife with your husband Um, well, we have to manage it because um, that is my job. So I have to work to pay the bills. And no, I, we, we, me and Broad, we do it a way that if I'm filming, he doesn't film. So we kind of put it in a way. And if, if we do do that, we travel with our kids. So yeah, it, it's manageable. Cool. And I heard that you had um, cancer preventive operation. It's very brave. And Why did you choose to do it? Because you are an actress, you have a career, it's, it's very... Thank you. Thank you.